This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? We are now at the mail charger here in Neskorn, and behind me here you see a Tesla Model 3 from Marcus Beal. So big thumbs up to him as usual, but this is a Model 3 long range. And in this video, I'm going to test uh, how much faster is it when you upgrade with a boost upgrade. You know, you can software upgrade this one to unlock more power. And it's not something unique with Tesla. Polestar also has it. But okay, so um, to do this in the most scientific way and the most correct way, remember to A, B, C, always be correct. We actually equip this um, long range with some uh, some schmutz. <laughs> no, but we equipped the long range with 21 inch Uber turbine P0, the same ones you get in the performance. So we're gonna test now. First, we'll test um, acceleration with these ones before the the boost, and then we try after the boost. Wow, we're taking 30 kilowatt, 129 kilowatt at 96 percent. Uh, first, I thought about starting at 95%, but uh, well, we might as well start at almost 100% since we are going so fast. Seems like we get this nice uh, huh, boost again, there's so much boost. But uh, I plugged in at around 90% and hot battery, and that's why we're getting so fast speed. Uh, but we had to wait a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how far we should charge. Yeah. We charge a little bit more, and then we unplug. But I'm going to show you here, yes. The battery is nice and hot. But uh, we can't see the... Uh, well, this one is not correct. We have to unplug and then uh, press the brake to see the correct number. And one way to tell that this is, it has not been upgraded is that if we look at pedal and steering, it will say chill or standard. Once you upgrade it, it will say chill and sport. And I guess if we look here and upgrades, uh, premium connectivity. Uh, wait, huh? Oh yeah, here it is, acceleration boost. 18,500. Wait, is there no description here? Okay, it says improve zero to 100. Okay, from 4.4 seconds to 3.9 seconds. Hmm, but there's not much more uh, info here. At least for the Polestar, it even says how many extra kilowatt or how many extra horsepower you get. Um, yeah, okay. So I guess we can just activate it afterwards, right? Hmm. Right, we unplug now. Okay, at least uh, SkyMy Tesla reports 427 kilowatt at 98.6%. So I didn't bother going to 100%, but uh, this should be good enough. But we might lose a little bit before, before we uh, start the launch. Launch number one without boost. Launch number two without boost. Launch three, no boost. Launch four, no boost. Okay, we're back at the main charger. We upgraded now. And I got a message on the phone that um, we have to be on Wi-Fi. So we have Wi-Fi connected and it has to be in park, but we are charging right now. I mean, technically we are parked. So, uh, and it says it could take a couple of hours. What the heck? I can't, I can't wait a couple hours. It's freaking midnight. Uh, and, but then before I bought it, it says, oh, it will be available immediately. Wait, what, what if we look here? Uh, I saw that in the app, the, that option was gone. Uh, so now, how do we know when we get the update? Uh, maybe I should unplug. Nope. Um, still says standard. And also, yeah, you see, unplug. We still have only 100, 427 uh, kilowatts. Well, I guess we just have to sit and wait then. Okay, we've been waiting here for about 10 minutes. Nothing is happening on the screen. So I think we just have to go home. Um, I have to do 1,000 kilometer challenge tomorrow. I need some sleep also. 
Uh, so I guess I have to come back tomorrow night then. Oh, extra overhead, but hopefully it's worth it. Um, I went back home and then suddenly I noticed we have sport and I actually felt that the car is faster. So I guess we'll go back again then uh, because we have nice and hot batteries. So we might as well utilize it now rather than coming back here tomorrow. Hmm, interestingly, you see here, seems like we don't have more maximum power. So, but the car feels quicker. Uh, wonder if they just, I'm not sure what they did. Uh, if they allow more uh, max current or if they gave you a flatter curve. We still have the same battery. We still have, the car is physically the same, except for the software update. Wow, it feels a lot quicker now. <laughs> it's, um, it feels like something between, uh, yeah, performance and, uh, and the long range. Wow, and I have to say the, the mid acceleration feels more brutal. Just slow down a little bit. See if you try to, if you cruise at 60 kilometers per hour, you know, this is typical 60 kilometers per hour behind uh, a Sunday driver and then boom, overtake someone, zoop. Wow. Oh, I like it. 18.5k nook. Is it worth it? Mm. We have to try 0 to 100 at least. We'll see. All right, let's try. Launch with boost. Round two. Fight. Right, we're back home now and I took a look at the results and what I found out is that um, if you look here uh, this is the one before the boost 4.46 uh, seconds Tesla claims 4.4 but you see we use the fatter tires and you see here we have uh, a long range but well, this was um, with winter tires but then you get 4.4 seconds according to spec so it's simply because we have heavier rims heavier tires uh, but anyways the reason why I use 20 inch here because we will also be able to compare against the performance um, so, um, but you see that here, okay, it's 4.46 and 404, four, not found. <laughs> uh, but we actually cut down the acceleration time by 0.4 seconds, whereas Tesla claims 0.5 seconds. But maybe it would be different if we use 18-inch uh, wheels. Uh, maybe we then get 3.9 as uh, specified, right? But um, uh, according to Scan My Tesla, at least uh, initial value seems like we don't get more power. Well, it turns out we have more power. So we have roughly 30 more horsepower. Um, that's probably why uh, when you see here at the acceleration times, um, <coughs> it is faster even off the line. And I also feel it that the car feels more brutal than before. Well, okay, maybe brutal is a bit uh, exaggerating, but at least it feels um, a lot faster than before. That's what I'm saying. And what else can I show you? Um, yeah, so, and another thing is that um, <clears throat> when we compare it against the, the, the performance, then how is that one? Well, the performance is actually 0.6 seconds faster. So, right, you get not only 0.4 increase, but you get 0.6 increase. And I guess the further up you go here, the more power you need and the more, actually, the more brutal it feels. So, this one, I would say, feels quite brutal when you hammer it, when you slam it. And also, and when it comes to horsepower difference, because you, you, you have, you add 30 horsepower here, but it costs you 18.5k nook. And then you get, actually, if you add around 21k nook extra, 20.5k nook extra, then you get, 100 more horsepower but not only that i can show you here if you look at the configurator at least this is the norway prices <laughs> all the other guys be like oh what the heck man so uh, you can see this price and you 
could divide it by 10, you can get euros roughly. So um, the long range in Norway cost, uh, well, actually this one, and then you have to add some extra. But if you look at the difference here, you see 495k versus 535, because it's 40k difference. So if you go for the acceleration boost, it will uh, cost you, of course, 18.5k extra. So what do you actually get if you go for performance then? 40k versus is only 18.5k upgrade. Well, the performance will give you, what well, it will say here, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, um, you get the Uber turbine rims, you get the performance brakes. Uh, it's not very, huh, what, why, why don't they show the brake calipers in this uh, rendering? You can kind of see it here. Yeah, the Uber turbine rims kind of hides the, 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 okay. You start briefly and then you, it's gonna almost disappear. Um, and then you get the spoiler in real carbon fiber, uh, not just some fake uh, Alibaba stuff. And you get, oh yeah, you get the aluminum pedals. <laughs> but the one thing they haven't mentioned here is that you also get track mode. But I heard rumors that uh, Tesla might implement it so that if you go for long range and you add uh, the acceleration boost, then you can also get track mode uh, yeah, on, on the package. Um, but uh, so then the question is then, which car, I mean, which upgrade should you go for? Well, you can choose then, you know, do you want to spend more money to get more speed or do you just want to have a little bit uh, more speed without spending too much? Um, one thing I want to point out is that, um, so uh, with the long range, you see here, that you, can, you can use the 18 inch wheels but when you get performance you have so fat brake calipers that um, well some some rims will work on it but uh, let's see now um, the strange thing here is that when I look at wheels we only have the 20 inch option here but I believe that the 19 inch works yeah I, I, I used a 19 inch on MC Hammer I remember original rims when I uh, but you see if you go for these ones which has the best aerodynamics but it looks ugly this is what happens with every EV out there when they want to maximize VLTP um, is that these rims will not work in the performance. You have to then get some, if you want 18 inch wheels, uh, rims, uh, you can get some, I don't know, I think T-Sport uh, line has something uh, or some other rims, but they might not be these close and they might not have the best efficiency, but at least you will have the comfort. So that's like, that's the best um, best deal if you want to get acceleration boost. Uh, it's not available, yeah. But if you want to get the acceleration boost and still have the comfort and the range, then you can use this one. I actually believe that even with the acceleration boost, you will not sacrifice the range unless you hammer it, of course. Uh, so you can still get the same VLTP and yeah. But if you want to have the best performance, then you can get this one. Uh, and then it loads kind of slow, yeah, because I'm on 4G or 3G, I'm not sure. Um, then you get the best performance and you can still go lower. You can go 19 inch here and still get good comfort or you can even go 18 inch and uh, non-standard uh, rims, uh, third party. Uh, and actually, I've been testing that performance car uh, lately and I found out that the 2022 performance has been softened up. Several people mentioned that. Uh, I used to own a 2019 Model 3 and I felt like the, the 2019 uh, was more unrefined, rougher, more okay, more like a sports car, of course, noisier. But I'm super impressed of the 2022 Model 3. It, it it feels more comfortable, feels more refined, actually better soundproofing. Because when I when when I drove that long range, which was uh, actually registered in the late 2020, versus this greatest and, and best um, um, performance. I felt there was a difference in soundproofing. I don't know, I, I couldn't pinpoint what it was, but it felt more more uh, gent uh, uh, more comfortable, uh, more like the German cars, you know, you, you muffle out the high, higher frequencies and you get lower frequencies, more rumbling, which is more gentle to listen to. Uh, and we, you know, this test, like you saw, we use the exact same rims and the exact same tires. So there must be something Tesla did with that latest and greatest Model 3 performance, which means that in the old days, if you want to go for uh, performance, you have to sacrifice comfort and you have to sacrifice, well, naturally, because you use bigger rims, then you will get more noise. Uh, but now you can even go for the performance and you still have the comfort and the noise levels and the ride is still okay. But okay, maybe for tracking, maybe the classic performance is better, but then it doesn't have heat scavenging, auto valve and all that. Um, so, 
now you guys have it um, so is it worth the, the boost yes absolutely it's worth the boost and uh, but which one is the best for you well it depends on how deep your pocket is how deep is your love for your car versus your wife <laughs> but I'm gonna highlight something else here um, since we have it here so you see that here okay so interestingly we have um, 30 horsepower boost here right and the speed uh, i mean it was 0.4 seconds faster what about polestar because they also have something similar let me see i had to find that's the polestar 2 pp with the upgrade and that's the polestar uh where is it again polestar 2 before yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh well it, it's kind of okay winter tires 20 inch just slightly different tires but um you see here at polestar i don't remember i think you had to pay was it 10 or 20,000? No, no. I think it was only 10,000. Look, okay, or uh, I don't remember how much it was. 10, but um, um, uh, we see here that we actually get uh, 70, almost 70 horsepower. Hmm? And But for some reason, the speed increase is not that much. It's actually only 0.3 seconds faster. So that's kind of um, slight bummer. And then, uh, so in, in different, okay, um, I remember when I tried the Polestar. I mean, the, the regular Polestar was already fairly fast, and I didn't feel like the, the, the upgraded one was that much faster. And also, from what I remember, the, the state of charge needed to be, you know, not too low, otherwise you won't get that boost. But of course, I haven't tried it in the Tesla, how that one would be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could spend a lot of time uh, doing the 90 to 10% launch and all that. But um, so in comparison, you see here that uh, you might pay, uh, pay some money for the, the PP upgrade and the, the power upgrade on the Polestar, but it seems like you don't get that much more. But uh, I feel like with with a Model 3, this one versus this one, wait, no, 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 no wrong one, wrong one, uh, buck, 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 buck. this one, yeah, this one versus this one, I felt the difference. It was significant difference. So now you guys have it. I gave you as much input as possible and then you can consider. Uh, one last thing I want to tell you is that uh, we, uh, you can pay for the upgrade and then you can try it out. But within 48 hours, you can then request cancellation and then you will get the money back to the card you paid for. But then if you try to upgrade again, <laughs> then you don't have the option to cancel it again. Otherwise, you can just kind of go back and forth and doing this, right? So you can get the upgrade for fee free for two, two days at a time. So just bear that in mind. But yes, so hopefully I get the money back. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Well, okay. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.